getting right into it, there is no middle ground with MMA and boxing, is there? There's like, what do you- let's have four cards from four different organizations, and then let's go to nothing and leave us all hanging. Now, what are we going to do on this weekend? They either give us fucking scraps. We're literally, be, they're tossing us like potato skins and like fat off of a steak, or they're giving us a nice prime rib dinner. There's no in between. It's horrible, but like... We'll definitely have to recap this weekend first, but uh, there's not much to talk about for this coming week. Um, but there was some fights this weekend. We're going to start yeah. off with, uh, what do you want to start off with, Bellator? No, PFL. Start with the PFL. PFL. Uh, that was Kayla Henderson. All right, let's talk about the Pettis fight. Okay. Who, first of all, who do you think won? I had Pettis winning the first two rounds, but like... I was also thinking, I got confused for a second. I was like, is the scoring in PFL like Risen where it's based on the whole entire fight? So, but then I forgot it was. I was confused for a second. I was trying to remember what promotion scored that way. And if you were to go under P- the Risen scoring, you definitely see the other guy win. But under right the scoring they were on, it should have been a Pettis fight. Okay, so from my opinion, yeah, Pettis won the first two. The first one he won easily. The second one was competitive but i thought pettis did the better work i edged pettis and then the third round if you wanted to score to 10-8 because you dropped pettis twice you could i didn't score to 10-8 because pettis wasn't really ever close to being out of the fight he was hurt but he wasn't really close to being out of the fight so you could score 10-8 but i didn't but if you did very at the very least it was a draw for pettis at the very least yeah it sucks it puts him in a weird situation he's do you do you think that the pfl brings him back for the next season i don't no. Why? For what reason? He was there to be a name. They wanted to like boost up like their promotion, and he's getting starched by guys we never even heard of. That's horrible, eh? Like he go, he went, and he came off the UFC, coming off wins too. So we thought we had some momentum. He looked good against like Chiesa and Morano and stuff, like Cerrone. Um, he should have beat these guys, and it just sucks. Yeah, I uh, I think if he doesn't get signed, which I don't think he will that Bellator will do something with him because his brother's the champion there. He's got some good favor. Uh, at 155, I'd say 155 is better in the PFL than it is in Bellator, to be honest. Well, we could definitely say that the Bellator, or the at Pettis' nearest career is over. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, I think he, there's better matches for him in Bellator than there are in the PFL at 155. Sure. He's definitely not a ranked fighter anymore. Oh, no, no. I, he's, like, outside the top 20. 30. Yeah, 30. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so another guy who's fallen on hard times is Lance the Party Palmer. The party has come to an end. He also has gone 0-2 this year in the PFL. He lost to uh, Kai, uh, Kai Balov, the guy we told you was going to win, Khabib's guy. And uh, it was a solid fight, but he definitely lost every round. But what do you do with uh, an- another big PFL name they had? He won the tournament twice, and he's on 0-2. He's not in the playoffs. He's been good with the company. He'll stick with PFL. He's in the was, he'll be in the next season. I was listening to um, Weighing In this morning, and they said uh, there's whispers that he might be looking to go somewhere else. We'll see. It might be good for him. If he does, what do you think is the move? One, uh, Bellator or UFC? Or Risen. One or, or, or I'd say one or Risen, for sure. I'd like to see him, yeah. I don't want to see him in the UFC. I don't think he's... If he was going to go, he should have gone three or four years ago. Oh, and he, we, they, I don't even think they'd sign him after two losses. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, I mean, let's be honest. I think PFL drug testing is a little bit different than UFC, so that dude looks a little juicy. Oh, a little juicy. <laughs> like a T-bone steak. And in the main event, we had uh, Kayla Harrison versus Cindy Dan Dwight just doing whatever she wanted. This is, bro, this is like... I don't know what to do. It's, it's not even fun to watch. No, it's horrible. I went to bed. I didn't even care. What is worse, Tyson in the early 80s or Kayla Harrison in the early two, 2020s? It's, it's a toss-up. It could be a toss-up. <laughs> but hey, at least... You. Go ahead. I wouldn't pay for her pay-per-view. Yeah, but hey, at least Tyson was fighting world-class competition. Kayla Harrison's fighting people that like shouldn't even be professional fighters. Yeah, horrible competition. Horrible competition. She, uh, that, She's another one that they're talking about is not going to re-sign with, to the PFL after this. Yeah, we'll see. I'd like to see her go down to UFC. 
There's but there's only three three people under contract at 145 pounds in the UFC. Three. But they could have uh, Kayla Harrison versus Chris Cyborg, which seems juicy too. That's in Bellator though. If she signed with Bellator. Yeah, I think Bellator makes the most sense, but in her mind, I think she wants a Nunes fight. So uh, either way, I'm good. If we get her versus Cyborg, get her versus Nunes, I'm good with either one. I'll talk about that they are going to try and keep Kayla Harrison around with a juicy contract, using that term juicy again, because Pettis, Lance Palmer, Rory McDonald are all losing. Doesn't matter if he, lo- he lost to Khalees and Tebow, even if you don't think he lost, still lost. Uh, that's three of their top stars. If you look at the, how they promote, like they always do that beer commercial. It's Pettis, Lance Palmer, Roy McDonald, and Kayla Harrison. They're going to have to throw Kayla Harrison money because they need to keep her around. Hey, not to mention uh, Fabricio Verdum dropped out of the tournament with a brain injury. So that's a big name that fell out as well. Oh, for sure. And, and, Muhammad, and Muhammad Usman's gone as well. Another big name for them. It's horrible. It's tough. It's tough. Okay, so we're rolling on to the... Hey, speaking of which, Bellator went head-to-head with PFL. I thought the PFL card was a lot better. PFL was way better. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. So the other card that was going head-to-head that night was uh, Bellator 261. You had Timothy Johnson versus uh, Valentine Moldovsky for the interim heavyweight championship. Um, anything on there you want to mention before we go to the main event? Liz Carmouche got her, her 30-second knockout. I mean... She's doing her thing. She's gonna get a title shot. Um, Did you catch the Sydney Outlaw versus Miles Jerry fight at all? No, dude, it was so bad, like so bad. Sydney Outlaw had him in. Um, he had his back, and he had the body lock on him for three rounds. In the third round, he finally sunk in the rear naked choke, got him out of there. But like three rounds of you just holding a guy like a backpack, like at some point. Someone's got to do something else. Like that, you, that shouldn't. I don't know. Should it be allowed? I don't. Is, that's just like a weird thing. Dominant position, right? It's a dominating position, but you're not doing much damage. Like, it's just like, what are we watching? You just hold on to a guy's back. Like, is it ba- are you babysitting? Like, what are, we, what are we doing? It's true. I don't know. At, at least he finished it. He finished it. So shout out to Sydney. He got to finish. Yeah, it's a good win too. Yeah. Okay. Main event: Valentine Moldowski defeats Timothy Johnson. Uh, the scorecards were fifty four. 50-45, and then 49-46, 49-46. Did you see the fight? I seen it. I scored it 3-2. to two. I had it 3-2. to two. It wasn't the most entertaining fight. Timothy Johnson was uh, kind of funny at times. I really wish we could get him versus Ben Rothwell. I think that would be a fun fight. Um, unless they fought before. I don't think they have. Um, but I knew that Badoski was going to win that. Can't even pronounce his name. I want to see uh, Tim, the truck driver, Johnson, get that one. Um, I don't think he lost all five rounds. That's crazy. The second round, he was getting outworked, but he rocked Moldovsky. So there's, you could give him the second round. He did get outworked, but he hurt Moldovsky. And then I thought he had a good fifth round. So you could have given him those two rounds for sure. But Moldovsky definitely won the fight. I don't think he did anything that makes me think he beats Ryan Bader, though. I don't know. Styles make fights. Timothy Johnson is a lot bigger. He's a lot bigger than Ryan Bader. I don't know. It's going to be tough to judge. Yeah, we'll see how Bader does against Corey Anderson next, too, and then we'll have a better idea. Yeah, that, we'll talk to that one when it comes. Okay, um, then in, we'll finish up MMA with the UFC. Um, anything you want to start on there? Or what, 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 what you on there? Quick shot at Tanner Boser, knocking out uh, OSP in the second round. That was a beautiful knockout. But there's a little bit of controversy. He might have uh, grabbed onto the fence to try to get out of that takedown. Did you see that? I think he did. It's close. It was close. And this is a couple Canadian boys saying this, so it's a little dicey. And he's been on the show. And he's been on, yeah, a Combat Hour alum. He's Canadian. He's got, a, he's got the Canadian flow. I don't know. I, I, that, I think that might need to be looked at, man. That's kind of greasy. It is. He, he looks, he's a greasy person, though, so. <laughs> okay, anyways, and then in the main event, we had Cyril Gaon versus Alexander Volkov. Cyril Gaon remains undefeated. He's now 9-0. and uh, Interestingly enough, he's not going to get an interim title shot after this, but uh, were you impressed by the performance? Yeah, I was very impressed. Volkov's no joke, and he outboxed him for four and a half, four rounds. Like, that's impressive. I don't think you could say that isn't impressive. He's a, fighting a lot bigger man. He was out, stri- he was out jabbing him which of the bigger man, like people got to give him more credit than he's given. Yeah, no, no, for sure. The technical skills are there. You can see the athleticism is there. 
I just I want to see him push it to that next pace. I want to see him try to finish somebody. And like he fights so safe. I mean, he's winning fights, okay, but like it's like that Shakur Stevenson that we were talking about the other week. Like he's dominating these guys. He 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 could have pitched a shutout against Volkov. I gave Volkov one, maybe two rounds, but uh I give him one for sure, but he, it's like Shakur Stevenson. We need to see these guys be pushed to the limit. He, it's just not there. They, they, I haven't seen anything from him that shows me championship pedigree yet because I need to see, I need to see his heart test before I can say that. I do think he's a bad stylistically matchup for Naganu if anyone's going to beat him. And I, crazy enough, they have a lot of sparring rounds against each other, I, I hear as well. So uh, those two guys probably know how that fight would go already. Exactly. Can't wait. But not in Ganu. He's getting Derek Lewis for the interim title. How do you see that going? We'll talk a little bit more into it. I do got Sirogane by fourth round submission, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's going to be a weird fight. Okay. Um, on the boxing side of things, we had <clears throat> the Matrix, Vasily Lomachenko returning against Masahiro Nakatani. What did you think about your boy coming back? Ah. Uh, he looked good. It was a crazy TKO. Like, I think the referee went to jump in at the end, and he got hit, and he fell. Like, as soon as he he, he was done. Um, he, it was good to see Lomo back. He it made me eat my words. Um, it is what it is. I didn't see the finish. What round did he get finished in? Uh, it was the 11th, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, about so. the 6th. But I think round 6 or 7, I turned over to the tank fight because uh, – it, I could tell it was done. Like I think I gave Nakatani the first round. That one was close. And then after that was good in the first round. Yeah, yeah. He the jab was good. He's keeping range. He was the right hand. He found him with the right hand a couple of times. But then after that, Lomachenko adjusted, man. And he got inside the range. He was landing the lead left hand. It was just like, dude, that was vintage Lomachenko. It's good to see him back. It's good to see him stopping the guy. And uh, that kind of sets up a Teofimo Lomachenko two uh, rematch on pay per view this time. As long as Lomachenko, uh, as long as Teofimo gets the job done against uh, Cambosos next month, and I and uh, Teo's dad was actually ringside watching the fight, so it could good. be a different fight. It's going to be a different fight this time. You think Lo- Lo- Loma gets it done this time? It's no, no. I don't think so. I think I think Teo might stop him this time. Yeah, I think Teo's just the better of all fighter. Yeah, and it's just like one's one's on the back end of 33, one guy's only 23. Like, there's a, there's a difference. Once, once when a guy loses I, to someone, I think it takes away something from them. And it's rare that you see a champion uh, come back and get their title from the same guy they lost it to. Yeah, especially if Lomachenko loses twice to Lopez, you know what that's going to relegate him to? He'll just be that old vet that's just going to be there and people are going to test their young fighters against him. If you can beat Lomachenko... You can be a world champion. If you can't be Lomachenko, he's going to steal your soul. Exactly. He'll still be a draw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People love Lomachenko. Exactly. Um, we got uh, – and people need to quit putting fighters in their name on Instagram. I got a guy yeah, a bitching at me because I was saying go Nakatini. And it was Loma is the best was his name. Dude. He just went off on him. That guy's a fucking goof. If you're listening out there, Loma is the best. Don't ever comment my shit again, dude. You're a clown. No one likes you. His little pictures, Lomachenko with his, like, fist up and, like, all the rings. Lomachenko got destroyed by Lopez. You can't have the championship rings anymore. You're gone. No one likes you. Fuck off. You know who he is? Bro, he's the worst, man. He's the worst. Okay. He just randomly started posting on my stuff, so. He has, like, one follower and just, like, all he does is follow Lomachenko. It's like, dude, just get off his nuts, dog. That's hilarious. Anyways, um, in the biggest fight this weekend, we had uh, Gervonta Tank Davis take out Mario Barros. Did you watch this fight? I don't think it was bigger than Lomo. It was a pay-per-view, bro. I don't know. We'll see what those numbers do. But uh, I do like I do want to say the, the dance from Davis in the corner when he dropped him or whatever was hilarious. Yeah, but, man, it, that was a great fight, man. Yeah, it was good. I had Barrios winning. For sure. Like, I think um, I had it... Barrios won the first four rounds. Then low, uh, sorry, then uh, Tank came back and won five, six, seven, eight. Won the next four, and he dropped them twice in the eighth. So I had him up by two points after that, but I had them both winning four rounds. Then Barrios comes back the round after he gets knocked down twice, wins the ninth round. 
The tenth round was close, gave him the tank, and then he gets stopped in, in the eleventh. It was just a crazy back and forth fight. Barrios was using his range well, but Tank would get inside, land the odd shot. What would you think? Uh, it was a good fight. The size difference made up a little bit of the fight difficult for Davis. But um, once he got his groove, Floyd Mayweather got in his ear, said you're losing the fight. Crazy terms of it was crazy that he said that and he comes out and knocks him out. Man, that that first knockdown he had in the eighth round where he fainted the the, the jab, turned it into a hook. And he just went flying back into the corner. Like, holy. That's Did like, dance. Huh? Did you see the dance? Yeah, 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 yeah. The shake. But, dude, when he, that, that knockdown, the way he flew, that's going to be like an iconic image going forward. Like, Ollie standing over Liston or something. That was beautiful. Oh, for sure. He's talented, but I'm still not a fan of him. I still want to see him get beat up, but it is what it is. Now, this is his third title i guess you, it was a, it's a wba regular it's not a real title but tech league's his third title in a third different weight division he had the wba interim in the at 135 so if you count that he has four divisions is this put tank into top 10 pound for pound no 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 okay i agree with you i don't think it is either i think he's got to have to fight a real champion in one of those two weight classes and he's got to fight a bigger name yeah. So after the fight, um, him and Mayweather took the stand and were in it. Were you there? You got me. I'm good. Okay. After the fight, Mayweather and um, Tank in the post-fight press conference were asked, "What's next? Who are you gonna fight next?" It's a typical question you ask a fighter. And Floyd takes the mic and goes, uh, "We'll we'll be fighting other PBC fighters. Anybody from 130 to 140 at PBC, you're, we'll be fighting you guys." Uh, we don't want to make other fighters famous outside of different organizations. Mm-hmm. What is going on here? First of all, Tank, take your balls back out of Father Floyd's purse and speak for yourself like you're a grown-ass man. You're 26 years old, right? You've got balls between your legs? Okay, hey, mm-hmm. speak for yourself. That's one. Number two, we're not asking you to go fight a YouTube. We're not asking you to go fight an MMA fight. We're not asking you to go WWE. We're asking you to box other boxers. Is that too much to ask for you to do your damn job? Yeah, it's crazy. These fights need to happen. What are, what are we doing? You're not the A side against Teofimo Lopez. What do you bring to the table against Teofimo Lopez? Please explain that to me. And I'd like to see him maybe fight a Haney. I want the Ryan Garcia fight. That'd be a good fight, too. But the pains would be a problem for Garcia. If Luke Campbell dropped them. Yeah, but look at Barrios. What Barrios did with the range, man. And, and Ryan's way longer than Barrios. That's true. That's it goes true. both ways. But, uh, yeah, it was a joke. Um, did, did you see the co-main event at all? Um, Lubin versus uh, uh, Jason Rosario. Uh, I didn't see it, no. So that was a pretty back-and-forth fight, too. Um, both guys got hurt bad. And then Rosario in the fifth round, I think, gets dropped again with another body shot, just like Charlo dropped him back in their pay-per-view last year. So this dude's clearly got susceptible sh- uh, to the body. Um that's going to make it a little bit tougher to ever get a title shot again because he's going to keep getting knocked out of the body. you got to do something about that. We've got to get some push-ups. We've got to get some sit-ups. We've got to do some planks. Let's, let's get it together, son. Build up your core. Exactly. Exactly. I agree with you. But what do we got this weekend? This weekend, we have no UFC, no Bellator, no PFL, no one championship, no Risen, uh, no Showtime boxing, no top rank boxing. Uh, we have Golden Boy boxing. That's what we have. Hold on a second. We have... Not- Oh, the zone boxing. Sullivan Barrera is taking on Gilberto Ramirez. I'm a big fan of Gilberto Ramirez. If you don't know, he was a former WBO champion at 168 pounds. Um, and he beat, he beat Arthur Abraham for that title. Now he's moved up to 175. He's looked pretty good at 175. Sullivan Barrera is a fringe contender. He should get through him. And then when, he, when that happens, I'd like to see him fight maybe like a Joe Smith or something. Yeah, let's get him a contender if he wins this fight. And that's it. That's all we got for you this weekend. Not an exciting weekend. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag that video of you saying no, 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 because there's not a whole lot going on. It's strange. Anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? No, we, talk, we covered the interim fight. So, yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. We're out. We're out.